So earlier we talked about trans impedance parameters and uh, uh, trans admittance parameters, the impedance matrix, the admittance matrix. So we talked about um, the relationship between admittance and impedance. Let's go back and um, review that once more. Admittance, of course, is simply the ratio of uh, complex current to complex voltage. And this would be um, a value for uh, current at the input uh, and voltage at the input or at the load and voltage at the load or current at any location on transmission line to the voltage at any location uh, on the transmission line, a complex number. And the relationship between the admittance and the impedance value is simply a geometric one, a geometric inverse. And so for a specific admittance, there is an impedance and vice uh, versa. The important thing, if you recall, to remember here though, well, we know that the complex value of the admittance, uh, or admittance is a complex value rather, and its real portion <coughs> um, we call the conductance, and the imaginary portion we call the susceptance. But it's important to remember that the conductance is simply not one over the resistance of the impedance, nor is the susceptance one over the um, reactance of the impedance. Uh, to go through and do this uh, uh, geometric inverse between uh, impedance and admittance is more, uh, com more complicated than that, so make sure you do that carefully. So with uh, respect to transmission lines, for every impedance value that we've spoke of, we can likewise um, represent it in terms of an admittance value as well. Uh, the uh, one over the, the inverse of the line impedance then would be the line admits at every different location on our transmission line, indicated by our position index Z, lowercase z, we would have a value of admittance, the ratio of the total current to the total voltage. Likewise, the load impedance, of course, we could invert to uh, uh, describe it instead in terms of a load admittance, and the input impedance we could likewise speak of in terms of an input admittance. Finally, when it comes to transmission lines, we could take the inverse of the characteristic impedance, and this simply would be the ratio of the plus wave current to the plus wave voltage, or the ratio of the minus wave current to the minus wave voltage. So instead of speaking of characteristic impedance, we likewise could speak of a transmission line uh, parameter being the characteristic emittance Y0. Additionally, then, we can define a normalized emittance. A normalized emittance is simply an emittance value divided by, normalized by, the characteristic emittance of the transmission line. And so just as we did for normalized impedance, where we designated it as a lowercase c with a prime, we do the same thing with normalized emittance, a lowercase y with a uh, prime or apostrophe to denote normalized emittance. Again, normalized emittance is a coefficient. It is unilist. What we can show algebraically, if it's not apparent otherwise, is that the relationship between the normalized emittance and the normalized impedance is simply, again, the geometric inverse. 1 divided by z prime is equal to y prime. So there's a direct uh, relationship between one value and the other. So there is a uh, direct mapping, a direct relationship between uh, line impedance function and the uh, line admittance function uh, y. So given one, we know the other. Mathematically, we call this a mapping or an isomorphism. We also know that there's a similar isomorphism between the reflection coefficient and the line impedance function, or the line impedance function and the reflection coefficient. So if there is this relationship between um, uh, gamma and line impedance z, and there's a relationship between line impedance z and the uh, line emittance, it seems like there should likewise be a direct relationship, a mapping isomorphism between the um, li uh, line admittance function and the reflection coefficient function. And in fact, there is. <laughs>
So it doesn't take much algebraic skill to show that the reflection coefficient function, which we write in terms of characteristic impedance and the uh, line impedance, <coughs> with our definition of line emittance can be written uh, instead in this form. And we look at this and we see a very similar relationship between reflection coefficient to line impedance function as we do from reflection coefficient function to um, line admittance function. The difference here is this minus one out front, and I should have made that more um, obvious uh, in the text, maybe put a parentheses around this. Um, uh, this minus one, remember, uh, uh, operates on a complex value. This uh, result reflection coefficient is a complex value. So minus one, we could write also as e to the j pi. In other words, a phase shift of uh, pi radians or 180 degrees uh, between that and the mathematical relationship associated with uh, um, gamma and uh, line impedance and uh, characteristic impedance. And so we can say then that the uh, line impedance function is related to the reflection coefficient function in this way. And we can invert that to show that the reflection coefficient function is related to the line impedance uh, function with this result. Of course, we could uh, divide all of the admittances by the characteristic admittance and write them in terms of normalized admittance, y prime. And in that case, we would find we uh, get this relationship between the normalized admittance and the reflection coefficient and the uh, reflection coefficient and the uh, normalized admittance. Again, notice the minus sign out front here. Um, um, so where do we go from here? If we can go through and we can map contours of uh, uh, constant resistance and constant uh, reactance onto the complex gamma plane, perhaps we could go through likewise and plot contours of, con of con constant conductance and constant susceptance on the Smith chart as well. Perhaps we could go through and take all of the um, uh, Cartesian grid of a complex admittance plane and plot them into the complex gamma plane and come up with a new set of contours would allow us to write and solve problems where we express uh, um, impedance not in terms of impedance but in terms of its inverse, the admittance, in terms of conductance and susceptance. And it turns out we can do that and it turns out to be very useful to us in microwave engineering, particularly when we are adding together shunt elements. If we talk about impedance, the calculation becomes more difficult because we're adding impedances in parallel. But if we write them in terms of admittance, we simply add their admittances together if they are uh, again in parallel. And the shunt structure in microwave engineering is more prevalent than the series structure. We typically have things that are more in parallel with each other than we do in series with each other. And so oftentimes, mathematically, it is very helpful and useful and, um, and makes things easier if we express impedances not in terms of their impedance, but in terms of their inverse, in terms of their uh, admittance. And so it's very helpful to have a Smith chart which will uh, 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 plot not the contours of constant resistance and reactance, but instead uh, um, Smith charts that plot the uh, contours of constant conductance and constant susceptance.